This new 616 class submarine has just completed her shakedown tests and trials, and the experts have rated her an efficient and formidable weapon. Now she is about to become a loaded weapon at this isolated pier a few miles north of the Charleston Navy Yard. Eight miles inland from the pier at the Naval Weapons Annex, a team of skilled technicians has been busy assembling and checking out Mark II missiles. Each missile will be packed in a liner, a 33-foot metal cylinder. The liner will protect the missile in transit and later will serve as a part of the loading fixture erected on the submarine. When the missile has been inserted into the liner through its forward opening, at the after end, a base skirt lock assembly locks the missile to the liner so it can't shift during handling. Now the payload will be installed. A hoisting frame is prepared for attaching to the missile by expanding its ring with a special wrench. Three hooks on the ring will mate with sockets in the skin of the missile. The expanded ring will slide on easily over the missile. That fitting at the top of the frame will be attached later to a hoisting block. Once in place, the ring is contracted by tightening until the hooks are firmly engaged in their sockets. A liner cap and its cover complete the line of protection of the missile. This assembled missile, completely enclosed and protected by the liner, is ready to go to the dock on a trailer truck. In a small building next to the loading dock, a final preparatory step is taken. Here, a specially designed hoisting unit that lowers the missile into the submarine will be attached to the liner. This hoisting unit and the liner to which it is bolted are part of the loading fixture. It has a rated capacity of 25 tons. Its two-speed reversible motor requires AC power, 440 volts, three-phase, 60 cycles. It's controlled remotely from a station like this. The operator can raise or lower the missile, fast or slow. He can override travel limit switches, slowly moving the missile beyond them, up or down. In an emergency, he can also override the overload relays. He can even silence the alarm that signals overload or loss of load. Because so much depends on precise control of the hoisting block, the motor must be in phase with the external power supply. If it isn't, phasing can be reversed by switching to another outlet. If one's out of phase with external power, the other's bound to be in. The third outlet is a blank. A switch on the cover of the motor controller selects the right load sensing circuit for the Mark I, the Mark II, or the Mark III. This trip, we're taking on Mark II missiles. As the hoisting unit is lined up and attached to the forward end of the liner, at the after end, the base skirt lock access is removed and the missile is released from the base skirt lock assembly. When the liner is later erected on the submarine's deck, this small access is the only place where the missile can be seen lowering into the submarine. The hoist block is connected to the hoisting frame on the missile. When the connection is made, the block is raised to remove all slack in the wire rope. The missile is pulled further into the liner to be sure the base skirt lock is released. 
the base skirt lock is now tightened again and its access cover is replaced. With the hoisting unit attached, the missile is now ready to be taken to the submarine. 